Welcome back to the Hazmat Chat podcast. This is part two of a three-part series talking about Stars Hazmat Consulting, the company that I own, and why we do what we do, what we do, and how we do it. So this is, again, the what we do part. So many companies tend to think of them, their safety and their security as being only within their own fence line, within their contiguous property. They think about their security plan and they're thinking about, you know, we're going to have guards at the gates and we're going to have, um, you know, cameras all around and, you know, really good lighting. When they think about their safety, they're thinking about making sure they do SOPs that include safety and doing safety training for their employees, all the things inside their gate. But what they forget about is they're also responsible for origin to destination. I mean, after all, manufacturing stuff is completely pointless if you can't move it to your customers. There's no, if there's no transportation, there's no sales. If there's no sales, there's no business. So transportation is a really key piece of the supply chain, but it's also the most vulnerable piece of the supply chain. Everything that STARS does is highly customized to what our clients are doing. Their operation, their culture, their um, methodology, the materials that they're shipping, and the way they're shipping it. But the bottom line is that you follow the rules. That's what you have to do. But what it doesn't tell you is how to follow those rules. Here's what you have to do. Now you have to go figure out how to do it. That's great in a way because it gives you a lot of freedom in applying those rules in the way that best suits your company. And that's the part a lot of people don't understand. Just because the other 10 companies are out there doing it one way, that doesn't mean it's the best way. So finding that best way for your company and the way you operate is, is really key to ensuring long-term implementation of your safety and security and compliance program. But it's also key to making sure that you stay as profitable and as effective and efficient as you can be. Our premier service is something we call virtual compliance officer. This is where we assume responsibility for or help manage with an existing team, the regulatory compliance program for our clients. Now, all the services we're gonna talk about right now, we also offer a la carte. The first one is consulting services. This includes everything from helping you interpret regulations to designing new projects, um, guidance about how to apply certain regulations. It includes a whole bunch of different things whatever our clients need. It's a pretty general category. The most important service, in my opinion, in this offering is our audit or gap analysis. This is really, really key. It helps you understand where you are currently, where you wanna be, and a path for how to get there. So we would visit your facilities, review all of your hazardous materials compliance, your transportation, storage, handling, and help you determine whether you're complying, whether you're doing things the way that's best for your company, and if not, how we can help you get there. It also will help you understand where you stand in terms of safety, risk management, and industry best practices. We also offer training. We offer classroom and hands-on training, uh, and we also offer webinar training. So let's talk about that a little bit more. So the types of training that we offer, we offer DOT hazardous materials training, which is U.S. domestic regulations. We offer IATA training, which is for air transportation, typically international, but it can also be domestic regulations. The same thing for vessel, which is IMDG, and TDG, which are the Canadian domestic regulations. We can offer operations training, as well as training in rail car inspection. If you do the classroom training, as I mentioned, there's also a hands-on portion. So depending on the subject that we're teaching, we'll design exercises where the students can practice the skills that they're learning in the training class. Whatever type of training that you choose, whether it's classroom and hands-on training or webinar style, style training, we will customize that training to your specific products, your methods of shipping, and your operation. The great part about that is it reduces the time that the students have to spend in class. Rather than a public workshop where they'll get everything and anything under the sun that's in those regulations that might apply to anyone in the class, we can tailor it to if all you do is ship rail and truck, we can focus on that. If all you do is ship certain types of hazardous materials, we can focus on that. 
and reduce your class time from an industry standard of two or three days to one full day, or in the case of a webinar, less than a full day. And all of our hands-on training includes your equipment. Now, there's no live product transfer or anything like that, but we'll be simulating with your rail cars, your trucks, um, boxes or drums you have on site, labels and marks you'll have on site, all the things that they're actually gonna be using, touching and looking at in their jobs. Some additional services that we provide include uh, obtaining special permits or renewing and becoming parties to special permits. Now, special permits are the opportunities that we have to comply in a different way from what the regulations require, still achieving the same level of safety. And it makes sense a lot of times to, uh, to implement those to make sure you can do the most effective job for your company. Um, we also have recently started helping to develop subject matter experts in our clients' companies. There were so many companies that lost expertise during the COVID period. And because of that, they no longer have that expertise in-house. The people that have been around 20, 30, 40 years are no longer there. So they need to develop new subject matter experts, uh, and, but they have no one to mentor them. So that's where we come in. For many of our clients, we've been doing coaching and development for those employees so that they can develop that in-house expertise. And in nearly all those cases, we're still supporting them long-term, um, but now they have at least the go-to person inside. We can also help with SOP or standard operating procedure development or revision, which also includes checklists. Now for reasons I'll talk about in the next episode, I'm not a huge fan of checklists, um, but most if not all of our clients use them in one form or another. So we wanna help make sure that those checklists are as effective as possible and that they work hand in hand with your SOPs or your standard operating procedures. We also can help with record keeping management, such as shipping papers, safety data sheets, your hazmat registration, your waste manifests, um, training records, all the things that you're required to keep and maintain and make available as part of your regulatory compliance program. So another really popular service we've been offering a lot lately and getting asked to do a lot lately is third party service provider management. So warehouses, carriers, tank farms, logistics companies, all of these outside parties that are helping you um, perform the functions that you have to do every day to move your products. We have been helping with contract review and internal audits of those companies, going out to visit their facilities and making sure they're representing you in the best way possible. They're not doing things to add risk to you that you were not aware of before. And also, of course, making sure they're complying with the regulations. We've been developing processes for onboarding new suppliers and new products from existing suppliers with our clients. Part of that is, again, because of the loss of expertise from COVID, a lot of companies no longer have the people inside that used to evaluate those. And we can also provide a level of expertise that maybe some of your internal people wouldn't have. Because we have an entire team of people with varied backgrounds, we can sometimes provide some insights that you might not otherwise be able to have. An additional service that we currently provide is rail car acquisition and inspection. So if you're gonna either build, buy, or lease some rail cars, you wanna make sure that you're getting the right specification for your material, the right size rail car, and that they're going to perform as intended for the life expectancy that they're supposed to have. So we will help you go out, inspect those rail cars, and help you with the acquisition process to make sure that you're getting what you need to get you're not wasting time, you're not wasting money, you're not agreeing to terms that are unfavorable to you. We can also help with issue resolution for those rail cars. So if the rail car goes out to a customer and all of a sudden has a problem, a defect, you can't get the product out, you can call us and we can help you resolve those issues. Now, in some cases, like transloading, we don't provide that service, but we have companies that we trust that we can rely on to provide that service um, in, in conjunction with us. Or also derailment management. Typically, this involves plant derailments, but if it happens in the railroad and you want us involved, we are more than happy to help you with that as well. And lastly, hazardous waste management. I don't, I don't know why, but lately we've been finding a lot of companies that have overlooked hazardous waste management as part of their compliance program. So this is something we've been paying a lot of attention to recently, making sure that they have their satellite storage properly and their labels proper and their hazardous waste manifests are being retained and completed correctly. Um, and all the things that go along with that. So this is what we do. And next we're gonna talk about how we actually do those things.
because there's other companies out there that can provide some of the same services that we do. So we're going to talk next time about how we do it differently. Thank you so much for joining us in this episode. I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.